Well, first, your reaction to uh, the word that the governor is going to resign later this evening? Well, I think we're all a little shocked by the suddenness of it um, and the sadness of it. In the last analysis, I think history will remember John Rowland better for having made this decision and, and spared the state of Connecticut going through more months of this turmoil. Uh, it's a day of sadness. There's nothing good when the governor chooses to step down from office under these circumstances. I hope this gives him and his family a chance to get their lives back together. Uh, everyone's talking about moving forward now, moving the state forward now. You will be playing a critical role along with the lieutenant governor, soon to be governor. What, what will you do next? What, what happens next? Well, the reality, and it remains to be seen how critical that role is, uh, the, the reality is, as I said to Lieutenant Governor, soon to be Governor Rell this morning when we spoke, that my job right now is to uh, work with my colleagues here to help her have the best transition, the easiest transition uh, to her new duties as Governor of the State of Connecticut. Uh, as that happens, I will have to end a, a long and very happy time in the State Senate. I have mixed feelings about that. I will become the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Connecticut. Uh, I hope that there is some role that I can play. It will be the first time since the Constitution was changed where a governor and a lieutenant governor will be of different parties. So I hope that there is some role I can play to be helpful to her and maybe to my former legislative colleagues. My final question. If, if there was a trial in the Senate, do you think it was inevitable that the governor would have been convicted, just based on the victory trial? I would, would never answer a question like that. I think that uh, what we know today is we're done with this, and we do move on. Uh, and as I say, uh, for John Rowland, for John Rowland's family, for the people of the state of Connecticut, uh, it's a time when we all have a certain sadness about how it came to this. For Jody Rell, uh, as I said this morning, our enthusiasm. She's a friend. She's been a friend to the legislature. We have a good working relationship, and I hope that uh, we will keep that working relationship as the years go. What do you think the people of Connecticut need to hear from a new leader like yourself? I, I think that that we are prepared as Democrats and Republicans um, to work together. That uh, we will give Jody Rell as our new governor the opportunity that she has earned and that she deserves to get things settled down again in the state of Connecticut and to get us focused on policy and as we should be. Uh, this has been a detour that no state wants to take and we need to get back on the main road of, of governing and, and leading. There will be times, I'm sure, in the years ahead where as two policy leaders, the governor and lieutenant governor, don't necessarily agree on everything. We talked about that together this morning. But my affection for her, my respect for her, uh, is, is profound. And, and I think uh, that would be true of most people who come out of the legislature. Jody has kept a great relationship with the people she used to serve with. That will now serve her well. And when were you notified about uh, the governor's plans for you this weekend? Or did you hear about it? In no, the media I think or most of us heard about it about the same way. And that was first through media reports and then call for, I did speak with Mark Ryan early this morning, spoke with Lieutenant Governor Rell uh, later this morning, but I think most of us learned of it the way the people of the state of Connecticut learned of it, and that is from media reports. And as far as being Lieutenant Governor, I mean, not to say that Jody hasn't been, but do you plan to be an active Lieutenant Governor? I mean, sometimes Lieutenant Governor just, you know, there, but uh, not just there. Not, heard, not heard from? Um, it's a it's an interesting office. It's not one that has a lot of responsibility or a lot of authority, and I am mindful of that and, and, and don't intend to, you know, tread heavily on, on that office. Uh, my job now is to is to help with this transition. Uh, Jody did, I think, in her time there show that it could be a bully pulpit. It could be a place to lead and speak out on a few issues, and I would expect that to be the case. But I'm mindful that Connecticut only has one governor at a time. Could you decline it? Could you decline? Would the Constitution require you to, to accept this position? I would have to not be in the state Senate. Well, I'd have to not be president pro tem of the state Senate in order to decline it. Uh, and the gymnastics that I think some people have written about that I know in the media a few months or maybe it's longer, some sort of gymnastics exercise where someone else becomes president and I step down and then I step up. And it, it's not going to happen. This is what the Constitution mandates. Uh, I am in the position uh, 
however mixed my feelings are, and they are really mixed after, you know, I've been in the state senate since 1987. I've been president pro tem now for going on eight years, one of the longest tenures in that position. There's not a moment of it that I won't look back with affection and, and, and appreciation for. But this is what the Constitution says, and I will do what the Constitution says and, and make the best of it. As somebody said to me today, it's time to go, you know, take lessons in how to make lemonade. Uh, that sometimes life gives you an opportunity that you don't see, and you have to make something of it, and I will do that. Senator, you don't have the transfer of power actually, that right, it actually occurs July 1st, and what's the significance of your understanding? And there's no significance of that date. I mean, it is the beginning of the fiscal year, so maybe that's why it was chosen, but I do know that uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor have fixed on, I think, noon on July the 1st as the date uh, on which government will change from John Rowland to Jody Rell. And somewhere around that time, uh, obviously, we will, we will take whatever the swearing in as well as lieutenant governor. Uh, this gives, I think, everyone a chance to do whatever they need to do to wind up and prepare. And so maybe that's as significant as it is. It's not that long. Somewhere in the meantime, the state senate will come together, the Democratic state senate will come together in, in, in caucus and, and make its selection of whomever is to be my successor. And then within 15 days after the transfer of power from governor to governor, uh, the uh, senate will have to convene to confirm like that. Senator, you talk about lemonade out of lemons. Um, do you have any plans now? Are like, you thinking of running for governor in 2006? I, I'm only thinking of what's going on today. And my comment simply was that while Jody, I think, has shown what you can do as lieutenant governor, it, it still is, uh, like the vice presidency of the United States, uh, an, an office that, on the face of it, doesn't demand a lot uh, of the person who holds it. And so for me to go from being leader of the Senate, uh, where there is not an issue, there is not a decision, there is not a, a choice that doesn't come across my, my desk as that leader, to one where whatever the role is to be, it will be, uh, that's my mixed feeling. I love this place. I hope, I sincerely hope, that, that my relationships with my colleagues here will serve the lieutenant governor uh, as well. And since we do have two parties continuing to govern, and for whatever else one may say of John Rowland, one of his successes as governor was being able to govern in a mixed government, this will be Jody's challenge as well. And if I can help her do that and help my legislative colleagues do that, I'm happy to have that role. Is that going to be a tough adjustment to make for you not having as much power uh, as the lieutenant governor? Sure. I'm, I'm you know, I have 40-some uh, people that work with and, and, and for me as, as Senate leader in our caucus staff. I go to an office which is staffed, if I remember this right, by five people um, at most. Uh, it is uh, a job as leader of the Senate where everything comes across your desk. Everything requires your involvement. Everything requires some decision. I don't think that's going to quite be the case as Lieutenant Governor of the State of Connecticut. Life, uh, life opens and closes doors. Uh, I, I, will learn, I learned that a long time ago when I was unsuccessful in getting reelected mayor of my town, and within a year and a half was a senator, which I never dreamed of doing. Uh, so sometimes there's opportunity where you at least expect. What did you Thank think you when you first heard about the resignation? When I first heard, I was surprised. I mean, genuinely surprised. Uh, it is not that I didn't expect it to happen. I have believed that, that at some point. Uh, Governor Rowland would see that for himself and for the state this was the best thing to do, uh, but my sense of timing was that it would be later than it is, and today's announcement, uh, at least the announcement, today's announcement I think caught us, caught many of us, if not all of us, by surprise. I know that, I'm sure she shared this with you, if she hasn't, she will, that uh, uh, Governor Rell was equally surprised, not today, but surprised that, the, that, that, that it was at this point in June as opposed to sometime later. Um, I think it caught all of us unawares. For the governor, I hope it allows him the chance to move on. Thank you. Thanks.